Uh, I am Mirig. And I am going to attempt to play quickly uh, Bucky O'Hare. And uh, we have the commentator, Dave, with us, our, gen our uh, generous host. Um, Dave, you want to you wanna say a couple things before we, we get moving on? I do. Um, first of all, I shout out Mirig VII. It says Mirig plays in there, <laughs> but we'll fix that in edit and post because apparently we missed that <laughs> one. But definitely go follow him. I've been looking really forward to this run in particular um, because Mirig is actually relatively new. Like he's only been speedrunning for mere matter of like a month now or about that. So not only did he pick up a really hard game, he picked up actually a really hard game, but he's also got an extremely good way of learning it because he's put in a lot of time and effort. And he didn't really cut corners and hopefully he'll be able to show that because he, he really did a, a fantastic job being so new to this. No pressure, Dave. Yeah. No <laughs> we'll put you up on the highest mountain, man. <laughs> yeah, no, Bucky's not an easy first game. So uh, I definitely wish you luck, and I'm here to help do commentary because I understand this is his first marathon show. So 100% props off to you. Like, I'm, I'm so happy that you just threw your hat in the ring like that, and you're like, yes, let's do it. <laughs> Well, you mentioned a kid's hospital. I was like, uh, sign me up because I'd want the same thing for my kids if there was something wrong. Yeah, no, Stollery is a great, great, great cause. Like, it's a very good hospital. Um, but yeah, if you are ready, I can start explaining some of this stuff and we can get going. But you tell me. Oh, hey. Oh, false start. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You're, cu you're counting me down, right? Yep. Okay, I'll wait for the demo and then you can pause out of it. Otherwise, the demo makes everything awkward. Alright. Okay. Three, two, one, go. So, Mirig actually is really cool um, because he runs a category called Warpless. So, people familiar with this channel have probably seen me run hard mode and they at some point saw me run normal, but we have never ever run Warpless until recently. But I'll put that aside for now. So Warpless uh, changes a big mechanic actually in this game. So the first mechanic that it really changes is the death abuse. Because in hard mode and normal mode, any percent, you can die in a certain way. And if your body transitions into the screen uh, as you're dying, like if, you're, if your corpse starts moving and it pushes you pixels against the ledge, you actually get warped ahead right to the boss. So you can actually skip both the yellow planet and red planet boss this way. And Nurig is doing a really good job at climbing the tree. And I was told we're not going to see top route, which is totally okay in the marathon setting. <laughs> <laughs> top route at the very beginning, uh, we actually learned recently that it's not a sub pixel jump, but uh, Bucky's coordinates or whatever alternate between an odd and uh, even pixel, I guess, like every time he steps. So on a certain, I don't know if it's odd or even, Ireland, I saw you in chat, you can point it out. Um, based if it's odd or even, you can make that jump up there where that coin is, and it actually saves about 5 seconds, but your chance of doing that and not dying is pretty low. So, anything you want to say here? This, this is a pretty easy screen. Huh. No, you're doing a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is like the one breathing. Other than uh, Green Planet happens to be one of the most reset heavy parts of the game, just because, you know, you... You do it so many times you want to do it perfect. It is, yeah. This laser section is actually right out of hard mode um, because there, I don't think there's a faster way to do this, so um, executing it. I still good. haven't learned the timing in the last two. That, that's still very good. You, you flew through that. So this dude is a little bit mash heavy, but not as bad as the next planet. He has 40 health. Uh, he jumps back and forth and runs back and forth like this. These boulders, if you get thrown on, are actually instant death, but they're pretty easy to avoid. And if your mashing was good, he will kill him on the right side here. And he did! There you go. Good job. That is the T-Cycle. And that is... Pretty... Uh, not free, honestly. Like, it's really not free. It, it's very easy to lose 7 seconds because he runs to the other side of the screen there. Oh. 
No red, per, no red. <laughs> yeah, that, dude, that is like the scariest thing in a marathon for real. <laughs> like, <laughs> so we actually have to go to Blue Planet very specifically for a very specific reason, and that is our girl Jenny. She absolutely destroys bosses. She does a ridiculous something like three damage per frame. So uh, her her damage output is like literally unmatched. And if you at any point after Green Planet accidentally go to Red Planet or you miss menu and you wind up on Yellow Planet, like there's, I guess you could technically game over, but um, it's basically like a reset. So we, we menu properly, we wound up on the Blue Planet, and regardless of any category that you're running, you always want to do Blue Planet second because Jenny is just that powerful. This is like the only consistent thing between all three categories. Ah, I respect that. Jump. That. that jump is tricky. There you go, see? Not Got it that time. No. Um, yeah, that, that jump is probably one of the first, I would say, hard jumps in the run. It is not free by any stretch of the imagination, and it's very easy to overshoot that. So we have the Iceberg. Uh, this is infamous in hard mode, in the other modes, worthless and normal. We can kind of relax a bit. You're, you're given a heart. Oh yeah, this is totally free. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, but the best thing is in Callum's hard mode record, or sorry, normal mode record. I can't imagine the pain that he went through in hard mode. In normal, he just gets to the iceberg and stands there for like a minute and a half. <laughs> and I'm like, Callum, <laughs> you earned it so much, man. You have no idea. This is like a... In hard mode, this is the hardest screen in the entire game. Um, it's kind of a pushover screen because you can just stand here and take the heart on your exit. But we are leading up to the blue planet boss, which is really tricky. And uh, he's, oh, I wouldn't say he's tricky, sorry. He's just kind of a pain because if you thought the boss in Green Planet had a lot of health to begin with, which was 40, for some unknown reason, I guess, great game design that they thought was in like 1990, they gave the alligator um, 160 health. So to put that into perspective, you are shooting one damage at a time and you are doing one damage, literally, like, one shot is one damage. So we basically need to mash 160 times to kill this alligator. And that is not fun in any kind of way. It is very tedious and probably the number one leading cause of carpal tunnel syndrome. <laughs> so. so, actually, there is a pattern here. Every fourth bullet, you can just stand under. So if you count here, after it's the first fourth bullet, and then after here he'll start to shoot six. That's two, three, and oh, there you go. We don't even see a fourth bullet. Mashing is good. <laughs> so next up is Red Planet, and we only do Red Planet next because ironically it doesn't matter, but it's the closest planet out of the menu. So you see Red Planet for a frame, boom, we're in Red Planet. <laughs> Um, Red Planet in Warpless specifically has some pretty cool tech because this is where Warpless starts to become a little bit different uh, in terms of the strategies and you'll see this because we actually want to power up Blinky pretty quickly and Blinky serves a couple of really important roles in Warpless and that's actually really funny because in the other categories he's like basically underutilized. So we'll see what kind of strategy he goes for here. I'll be quiet just for a second. Okay, great job. That that's that's another scary jump. So great job on making that one. And uh, yeah, this this is like ripped right out of Mega Man. Um, as long as you avoid the fire, like the fire isn't random here, so it comes down at a very specific rate. I guess it's lava, whatever it is. So we're gonna take the coin, I think. Okay, with Jenny. Jenny first. Also, very good job. That is another very tricky jump. That's not very friendly. It's extremely easy to die there. And we're gonna enter probably the worst part of the Red Planet really soon. Uh, it's a vertical climb that just sucks. It's not fun at all. Ah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty nope. bad. But yeah, th this climb here is like easily the worst part of Red Planet. It's not fun. Um, it, it looks really easy, and it's not. <laughs> like, you can easily fall here and lose like 20 seconds. So. Oh, like that. Yeah, or you get that was weird. blocked from these platforms. Like, it, it's a horrible waiting game if you don't make this kind of like one cycle. Oh my word, this climb, yo. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, so I, I cursed it. But to be honest, like this isn't even a bad red planet climb. This is like average red planet climb. So. Like it honestly is a bad section. 
Very good. That is an extremely difficult jump to make. I think you have to jump on one frame there. So, glad to see that one. And this is where Blinky has a little bit of tech and work with us. We can warp to the screen transition and just fly right in there. And Blinky is going to be super important for Yellow Planet specifically coming up. So he's going to actually grab a power-up at the end of this auto-scroller screen. And that's actually going to be a pretty big deal entering Yellow because that's, I think, where the categories diverge the most when it comes to work lists. And Blinky's role, in particular, is like massive when it comes to that. So we'll see if... Uh, we'll start to see our first appearance of Jenny here. So this is how fast, if you've never seen this game, how quickly she can kill the boss. So we have the boss, he opens up, dead. So <laughs> <laughs> this is why we have literally Jenny from like second planet onwards and why we need to pick her up. Like no other character can DPS that fast, like it's only Jenny. I'm gonna try for that card skip, Dave. All right, I look forward to it, we'll see. So, uh, I mean, we powered up Blinky, right? Um, that's the only reason why we would do that. Um, but yeah, so what Mirig is talking about is a card skip, and this is probably one of the hardest tricks. Actually, without a doubt, I think it's the hardest trick, actually, in Warpless. And this is, I think, one of the big category changes, because as Warpless implies, you're playing the game basically all the levels. So you're not death warping, you're not skipping to the bosses. And there's a couple of pretty hard spots, actually, in yellow. The first couple of screens actually utilize a weird bug because you can just run left in this game and for whatever reason there's actually some pretty nasty hits done where if you get hit out of the air, like Bucky just plummets and if you also get hit if you're facing right, Bucky just stops. And I'll give Miri a second here maybe on this climb because this climb is a little bit rough. Ah, uh, crap. Pretty close. I spawned him a little too early. <laughs> Could have been way worse. Um, yep. <laughs> that, that was still really good. Um, so yeah, uh, as I was going to say, that one of the main reasons, sorry, that we powered up Blinky, and one of the main reasons that's coming up actually, is we have minecarts. And that climb and this section coming up here, is one of the hardest sections, I think, in Warpless. So the first one here is pretty free. You can fly like that and land on the cart with Blinky. This one I'll be quiet for and we'll see if he gets it. Good luck. Oh, oh man! So close. That was good. So close. He toe tapped. Yeah. So to actually skip that cart, it saves about, probably I would say, like close to eight seconds. The second one is the biggest one. And on top of that too, it's got to be like a one frame window, and Blinky's got a, a decent pixel window that he can be on the left side of that thing, um, but the, the input to actually release the flying button, is ha it has to be one frame. Like I'm curious in testing that later and checking it out. But there is two cart skips in Worthless. You can skip this section too, but this section you only save about maybe a second or a second and a half. And the first one's the big one, because you can save nearly, uh, again, eight seconds here. So I definitely appreciate the attempt there. That's that's not an easy thing, especially not in a marathon to just throw it. So that was that's a bit of a bummer. <laughs> no man, <laughs> it's totally okay. Like that's a very hard trick to nail. Um, you'll see also Blinky why we power him up at the end of this screen because we can fly again into the screen transition and then save a little bit of time. And from here, this is actually an extremely hard kill. Uh, so I'll be quiet again here for a second. Oh, almost. That was almost Ooh. the true one cycle. That was very good. <laughs> so you have only about three pixels, I think, to line up Jenny, so you don't get shot in that uh, first phase. He'll like shoot two bullets at you, like two waves of bullets. And I think you only have a three pixel window to line her up, so you can charge that shot. And then after that, yeah. So we got a breather here. We got a cutscene. Anything you want to say here? <laughs> uh, uh, other than I did that minecart skip in practice before the marathon, and I was getting it about like 70% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I feel like it's going good. Um, it seems to be running pretty good. Yeah, this is great so far. Honestly, you could argue we say like the hard part is over. Yellow Planet is kind of like the section of Warpless where like. You're breathing a little bit heavy and stuff like that. What? 
And then we're kind of okay until Magma, but... Um, so, entering Cell. Cell is a weird mix. I wouldn't necessarily say like it's a difficult level, but there's some difficult sections in here. So, I would say this is the first level that you have to be extremely health conscious, because uh, if you wouldn't necessarily know this story unless you've obviously played this game. We spent all of this time literally saving uh, all of our crewmates who were scattered on all these different planets, and then they immediately got kidnapped again. So they became, I guess, like under the influence of evil or something. You'll see it here in this next screen. And we have to beat them up to get them unevil, I guess. I'm not exactly sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't have the proper amount of health here, this is actually an extremely hard fight because look how much Jenny takes for damage. Like, she's just a massive truck. She hits you so badly, uh, it's actually quite incredible how much damage. I think she's the most damaging thing outside of instant death in the entire game. And oh, I was one hit away. Yeah, that, that was actually really good mashing. Um, killing her is quite difficult because she is associated... I think she's got like 140 health, so she's just under the alligator. But she has a lot of health, so you have to shoot her again quite a few times. Not a really easy way to do that. So this little skip, I guess, coming up where you run under these blocks... Well, maybe not skip, but again, maneuver. That is not exactly free. It's easy to die there. It's also easy... Okay, I was gonna say, in this next section, to take damage on those lasers if you're not careful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many times I just, like, walk into that screen and die, so... So we have Willy, and luckily in Cell... Uh, oh no, it's a dirty Willy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was gonna say, luckily in Cell, you get Jenny back first, but, um, yeah. It's... Probably faster just to die. Oh, ah, see, now at this point, maybe not, but I would agree in the beginning, for sure. See, I don't know his health, how much damage you did with Come on. Nice sneak it out. Nope! Oh, <laughs> just <sniped. died. laughs> We're gonna reset it! <laughs> okay. Alright. I haven't done that in ages. Really version 2.0. Oh my word, my orb control is terrible tonight. That That's actually Willy. something in itself just to talk about, like controlling Jenny's ball thing. It's, it's like called spirit <laughs> orb or whatever. Spirit bomb, I think. Um, but controlling that is, a, is actually extremely slippery. Like it is not an intuitive thing to control. And it's actually very, very, very precise, so... I always tell people, like, when they're learning this for the first time, you learn how to speedrun the game, and then you learn how to control Jenny. Like, they're two separate things. <laughs> uh, so that was a very nice little skip thing there, uh, using Blinky. That jump is... not a good jump. And here we have probably the only, maybe, quote, downside to the run, in my opinion, is, like, this unskippable auto-scroller. So it that is. I that I don't take the the pixel per or the the pixel area where everybody else stands because yeah. I'm I'm too bullheaded to learn it. <laughs> yeah, there's actually like I think it, it's a three pixel window that you can stand and just stand here, so you don't have to like run around like a madman and shoot everything. But yeah, this this section is so it's I guess it's worth pointing out like in the other categories the way that the death warps work as I said you have to have your body pushed into like the transition of the next screen ironically that doesn't work on sections that are vertical like there's no way to push your body up when it's dead so there's no way to feasibly skip this section or the vertical climb in red which is awful because if there had to be skips in this game I would 100% take skipping these sections over the ones that it does skip but such is the case. So. Yeah, there's there's not a whole lot to talk about during this section. It's just a spot you really don't want to die. You really want to kind of <laughs> control your nerves and yeah, like I did during practice today. Uh -oh. That was fun. <laughs> So we're almost at the top here. Uh, the last person that we refight is Deadeye. And he's significantly easier than all the other guys that were hypnotized and evil again. And 
just one more and we're good. There you go. So we are almost out of cell. That was really good. Where was that? Yeah. <laughs> That was extremely good. A little piece of trivia is two things here um, that I don't know how many people would know. The order that you defeat and unlock the characters is actually the order that you switch the characters. And most people wouldn't know that once they speedrun the game because it's always the same route. And on this screen and only this screen, this is the only time that you kill a boss and you don't immediately lose control. So if you want to switch, so he's going to start off as Blinky because he didn't switch. But if you wanted to switch... Because I forgot. Oh, okay. Well, you're going to be Blinky here anyway. <laughs> but yeah, like if you switch to De like Deadeye or anybody else, uh, you actually start this screen. It's the only screen in the entire game that you start with whoever you stopped using from the previous screen. Oh, really? Yeah, these jumps aren't free. So stopping there for like half a second manipulates that guy to jump away from you. And then same here, you can just kind of make a mad dash for the door. So we're entering Salvage. Salvage is probably, I would say, like this is where the difficulty casually and in the speedrun starts to pick up. Um, in the Warpless category, you, just, you have to be pretty health conscious again. Uh, there's like this section coming up with these weird bugs. Mm. They hate me. Yeah. I swear, I'm gonna get hit by all. No, well, I missed one. There you go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Well, yeah, yeah, dude. It's yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you really don't want to get hit by those guys because this section, uh, these little guys actually take quite a bit of damage. So um, you might have to, yeah, just inch your way oh, through. And you do get a heart on the next screen, so you can recover. But if you don't get hit in the previous part of that screen, you can just run right through. Shoutouts to Mirig, literally, uh, he actually figured out that there was like this really weird soft lock that hard crashes the <laughs> game here. So it turns out, and I had no idea, I actually like reversed engineered it and like passed it, but it turns out that if you have a slug on your ah. head, there is a two frame animation that the slug will grow, and in that time, if you manage in those two frames to jump into the spikes, the game just freaks out and crashes, like it completely breaks. So I had no idea that existed. Mirig unfortunately found out one night, and he was like, "Hey, have you ever seen this crash?" And I was like, "No?" Question <laughs> mark. So <laughs> we figured out how it actually worked and like what went into it. And it turns out, yeah, if you jump into the spikes with a two-frame window, uh, you will crash the game. As the that that was scary. <laughs> So these weird worm things can eat you if you're not careful and you jump into the center of them. And actually salvage is one of the shortest splits because we're at the boss already. So we want to line uh, Jenny directly under the E, which was actually a very good way to do that. We'll kill the bottom part first and uh, kill the top part right afterwards. And if you're really quick and you do this, um, you can- Oh no! Okay, we're safe. If you're really quick and you can do that before he descends like that, um, you can kill him. And if he descends on top of one you, frame away. it's instant death. Yeah, of course. It's always like one shot away in this game. Like, always. <laughs> oh, chat. <laughs> <laughs> I see it in this show with the butthole room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this jump sucks. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll be quiet here. This this jump is one of the worst in the entire game. There it is. Well done. That That is probably close to a 2 or 3 frame window, and on pace it is terrifying. It is a very common death, so you'll see that one a lot in between all the categories. Nobody likes that jump. So entering Magma, this is probably one of the harder screens. I'm actually curious in your opinion, now that you've optimized this, do you think Yellow Planet Warpless or Yellow Planet, or sorry, Magma is harder? Uh, one moment here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell you my opinion, you can tell me when you can speak again. But I think, honestly, Yellow Planet might be harder than Magma now. And that's very much kind of like a Warpless exclusive. Uh, no, because it, uh, there's one room in particular that's a bit of an issue, and that's the second, oh boy, the, the second snake room. With uh, the monkeys. Yeah, I know in that jump you're talking about, right? Alright. I'm botching this room terribly. Let's go. 
Yeah, so these guys actually take a lot of damage too. Uh, in theory, this is another spot that you really want to conserve your health because you can boost through all of them except for, I think, one. And entering these next couple of screens, this actually is probably one of the spots that really gave people a hard time when it came to casually. Uh, not, well, I mean, like, this whole level, <laughs> if you made it this far as a kid. But there's, like, a rotating room section that's Oh no! Up. That's a good save. You didn't die. That was close. <laughs> Just dancing with that for no reason. <laughs> that, that was completely unnecessary, but you saved it. <laughs> it's okay. Epic inspired you to terrify chat for no reason. <laughs> At least you didn't threaten Taking us. notes from the previous streamer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, the, these rotating rooms are awful. Like, they're... Um, once, once you kind of know the speedrunning way to do it, uh, you have a pretty good internal timer, like when to jump, and, like how to cycle through them, but casually this is a really rough section, I think, for a lot of people. A lot of people have a hard time figuring out how to do this section. So we're entering the best part of probably Magma. Uh, these little monkeys coming up are... I, they're, they're not quite random, but they are partially random because based on your screen position, they'll fall. And uh, based on, I guess, like some kind of global timer or something will fall. But depending where you are in proximity to, I guess, where they're supposed to fall, they kind of have like a tracking thing. So it's not uncommon for the monkeys to literally drop on your head as you're trying to make a jump. And that jump is not free. So big round of applause there because that's also a very scary jump to do in the middle of a run. And there you go. That, that was a very smart move. They usually bombard me right there too before I pop up. So very specific kill here with Jenny. Uh, it is possible to kill the bottom part and the top part. Oh. That's okay. And the top part in one orb. And then uh, you want to get rid of that other orb because you just have enough power on a full orb here to break the glass and kill the middle section. So that was Perfect. very well executed as well. Good job. So we're at 24 pace, yeah. pretty good. Doing excellent. Oh yeah, I'm running a timer too. I'm watching. There <laughs> <laughs> you go. This is a very good pace. So we have the escape section. This is a giant auto scroller, and it it is again comprised of like two weird sections. This kind of first part isn't really that difficult because all you really need to do is avoid getting dragged into the spikes, which are instant death. Uh, but the game actually gives you a lot of hearts. Like, I always wanted to count, there's like 10 or 15 hearts or something like that. It's a ridiculous amount of hearts. Which is kind of funny because in one of the bosses coming up, if you game over, there's actually no heart after that checkpoint. <laughs> so they really thought, like, I, I want to see the developers think about this. Because they're like, yeah, hearts everywhere. Like, we, we know this is going to be a hard stage for the kids and stuff like that. And then on the one section you game over, there's like no more hearts. And then it becomes like 10 times as hard. But in the first part, as you can see, hearts everywhere, um, so it's pretty easy to get through this section. But then there's a couple of weird things that come after this that are pretty difficult. So the first part is there's a boss that's coming up. He's actually on a really weird frame rule. Uh, he is not quite on a health bar, and depending on how you start killing him and how fast you start killing him, you can kill him really quickly. I'm not sure if you've learned those strats yet. Um, but there is... Uh, I pulled it off once in practice earlier. Okay. So between, like, the fastest frame rule and killing him and the slowest frame rule, it's something like 12 or, like, 15 seconds that you can lose here. So it doesn't look like you're doing anything wrong. Like, it just looks like you're shooting over and over and killing him. Ooh. That was close. Um, but, yeah, there is a... He's got a fat head. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I have said that for years running this game. Like, this kid's got a watermelon head. I'm so glad that a new generation <laughs> of runners see that too. Like, his head will kill you. It will ruin runs. Come on. <laughs> nope. Didn't get it. Yeah, so this is what I mean. Like, it doesn't look like you're doing anything wrong, but if you do this optimally, this section can die, and I think it's like two rounds going back and forth here. So that was pretty good. And then if you do this section down here properly on the fastest frame, I think it's also two rotations. So you'll start to see now, it's going to be a slower frame rule, which means all of this health doesn't even matter. So we're on whatever frame rule now. So, and then, Oh my word! Yes, probably slowest frame rule because the top part wasn't ideal. Which is crazy, that's what I mean. Like, you don't you don't think you're doing anything wrong. It's like, okay, suddenly I lost like 12 seconds there. 
So this head boss is a little bit scary. Um, he shoots three bullets at a time on the screen, and oh, there you go, dead. And as long as there's a bullet on the screen, he couldn't have spawned another bullet. So you basically just need to be kind of like peripheral vision aware that there's two bullets on the screen, he'll shoot another one, and his rotation and how he bounces around the wall is completely random and how he shot the bullets is also completely random, but he can only shoot three bullets on the screen at a time, so it's not like super random. So as long as you can kind of keep track of the bullets, you can track it. So catching up to this, this ship is probably one of the biggest, I guess, like wreckers of speed runners. <laughs> um, this uh, <laughs> has like a, basically a two pixel window. We can use Willy in a very, very specific way here. And Mirig is insane. This is not even something that I do in hard mode. <laughs> The fact that he dodges all of these uh, turrets and he doesn't kill, you can kill about two turrets to make this section way easier. I've never seen anybody do that before. So, <laughs> by a hack goes off to you there, that's not something I would do and I'm a crazy person that does a lot of things. So we actually are in the per perfect position, uh, that's about the distance away that you want to be because the ship is blinking really fast, so quick kill activated. That is a very hard trick to do in a no reset setting. No reset setting, sorry, because that's about a two pixel window. That saves you almost a minute either way. If you die and have to fight again, it's about a 40 second loss. If you wait for the ship to cycle, it's also about a, like a minute loss. It's, it's a terrible thing. So, very glad to see that one. And we're entering the final boss. So this is a very normal mode uh, way to kill the boss. We want to get up in his hitbox right here and basically use Willy to shoot in a very precise way. And I think we're gonna have to do- Oh, you got oh, it! Got Excellent it. job! Very, very, very good. And then that would be time. Alright. So, that's a 29-22. I split slightly late, but I see on your side. And that is- Yeah, 29-22-23. That is a fantastic first showing. That is a very, 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 very good first showing. Woo! <laughs> How your nerves feel? <laughs> oh, the nerves are fine, but my hands are frozen because I turned the heater <laughs> off because I didn't want to sweat buckets, you know? <laughs> there you go. I like how you took those preparations. <laughs> well, yeah, Smatic, I know I could do better. <laughs> I'll let you speak. You, you were pretty focused there. So anything you want to say, you go right ahead. So this, this came out in what, 91, 92-ish, I think. Yeah, it was late cycle, the, the NES, and uh, my uh, my parents rented this for me for like a month straight, and back when I was seven years old, I couldn't even get past the planets, and it's kind of crazy, you know, 30 years later, and I'm, you know, beating the game in under 30 minutes, but uh, I, I want to thank Dave, because it wasn't me submitting a uh, a run it was actually he came up to me and said hey why don't you run Bucky in, in an event that's going on and it was like two maybe three weeks into uh, into me actually speedrunning this and my goal was to hit sub 30 uh, before the event and now thanks to Dave I'm currently fourth with uh, I think it's a 27 27 29 so thanks for uh, depodium <laughs> no problem <laughs> But uh, I do want to thank Dave and Kat for the opportunity to actually do a speedrunning event I, I never thought I would actually get a chance to do. And, uh, it's for a great cause, honestly. Like, the moment you mentioned kids, one of, one of the, the biggest proponents of my life is my children. And if there was something wrong with them, I'd, you know, wish somebody would do the same thing for me. But, uh, yeah, no, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess if I had final words, go follow Murig. I keep shutting him out. He is a fantastic new runner. It is not easy. And I am really glad because when I set up this whole marathon, I had, I always put myself in the schedule, not because I absolutely want to run in the marathon itself but because it's a flexibility thing. Like if somebody cancels or if there's tech issues or something, I can put myself there because I'm available all the time. So I had every intention on running Batman and Bucky. And when I saw that he was running Bucky and I approached him, I, I didn't even say it. I just said like, hey, if you want to join this thing, it's there. And he actually submitted. He thought about it and he's like, yeah, let's do it. The nerves that I remember being a new runner, 
that you have calmed with a radiator <laughs> or a heater um, are, are just fantastic. So I'm very, very pleased. Like, I think this is such a good thing. And it is not easy as a new runner to join events like this or to participate and not be overwhelmed by nerves, much less make the rapid progress that you have made in the short period of time that you've made it. So you're a fantastic runner. I think you deserve every single thing. So just please follow this guy. I, I honestly think he's going to do really good speedrunning things. And I'm very stoked because the biggest, coolest thing to me is I'm an old man now when it comes to speedrunning. Like I think my Twitch account is like five years. I am absolutely happy to pass off Bucky to you and the new generation that is you. So in the next marathon, you can run it and I'll just be like some cloud in the dust or something like that. Second place still, but... <laughs> oh no, that's coming. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just saying. <laughs> All right, there you go. By the time this is uploaded, uh, I'm done. I'm third place again. Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it is so good to see new runners with this kind of potential and skills. So again, I'm very happy that you decided to join because a lot of new runners, they just, they can't get past those nerves. And just on that note, before I close, like if you're a new speed runner, try it out. Like it, it's a really good experience. And hopefully in the future, you can probably rope some new friends and stuff like that and be like, Hey, yeah, this, this didn't make me die of a heart attack or something. <laughs> like it was pretty fun. So yeah. <laughs> No, this was this was a good time and this this uh stemmed other other runs that i'm looking into one i'm working on right now is uh demon's crest any percent and 100 percent and oh boy that's a good time too <laughs> yeah yeah demon's crest is crazy so there you go yeah unless you have any other final words um i will probably transition out and we have shasta next which is another crazy run and crazy runner shasta is amazing but... <laughs> no, I'm I'm good. I don't, I don't got anything else. But uh, other than thank you, thank you again, and thank uh, Cat when she's awake. <laughs> I will happily do that. And once more, go follow that guy. <laughs>